Awesome. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, welcome, welcome uh, to my session, which is what's new in graph data science land. Uh, my name is Luke Gannon. I'm a product manager here at EFJ, and I look after graph data science and ORDS, our graph data science as a service. So just to give a quick outline of what I'll be talking about for the next 15 minutes, uh, for those that are new, we'll be talking about what is graph data science in general. So giving you a quick 101 and a quick overview of what Neo4j graph data science is. Uh, I'll do a 2022 wrapped as well. So what's been going on in our two series of releases uh, and quick highlights as well. And then a sneak peek into what's coming next. Uh, and then to round it off, I'll be talking about how you can get started with Neo4j graph data science. And so to begin with, what is Neo4j graph data science? Well, first we need to answer the question of what is graph data science? So graph data science is when you want to answer questions, not just with your data, but also the connections between your data points. And this is really important because when you have these connections, they allow you to answer new questions like who is the most important or what's the best choice for someone or what might happen next. And now if we're looking at importance, we might wanna look at who has the most connections or if we're looking for the best choice, we might wanna find out who else has bought the same item? And if we're looking for what might happen next, we might wanna find what's the most common path for someone. And so in terms of importance, we can use graph algorithms like PageRank to then find importance within the graph. Or if we're looking for best choices, we can use things like shortest path. Or if we're trying to predict what's happening next, we might wanna use who's in the same community to then predict with. And so this allows us to answer the big questions of like who's an influencer within my network? Uh, what's the most likely purchase for this particular person or where relationships might form in the future. And with Neo4j graph data science, it allows you to apply graph data, uh, data science and machine learning to graphs at scale. And the way that we do this is that you can use your graph projections and you can take this either from the Neo4j database or you can use some of our new procedures in the Python client that allows you to construct uh, in-memory projections using the construct function uh, and bring that straight into memory. And we give you an immutable in-memory workspace where you can run all the algorithms, machine learning, and we also have some auxiliary utils. So you can run classic graph algorithms like centrality, pathfinding, community detection. You can do feature, uh, sorry, feature engineering from algorithm results or generate node embedding from your graph. You can build in-graph native machine, uh, machine learning pipelines using link prediction, node classification, and property regression. And this can all be integrated with external machine learning frameworks using our Python client, our blazing flask import and export using Apache Arrow, and it's all formatted to data frames, so you don't need to do those conversions for you. Now, Neo4j graph data science has a host of algorithms. We have the over nearly 70 plus algorithms. And just to highlight some of the categories that were in particular, things like pathfinding and search, centrality and importance, community detection, supervised machine learning, heuristic link prediction, similarity, and graph embeddings. A lot of people always keep on asking for our graph embeddings. And we've got lots of other kind of auxiliary procedures so that you can do collapse paths, graph sampling, one hot encodings as well. And we take care of that ETL from the database into in memory for you as well. So just to do a recap of the 2022 wrapped and what we've been up to. I think it's always good to kind of start off with where were we at the end of 2021? And we had done all of our supervised machine learning pipelines. We'd also introduced more graph embeddings and enhanced our machine learning ops as well. So in April 22, we launched 2.0, which included the Python client, as well as loads of new algorithms and other bits. Uh, we had also launched OrDS Professional on GCP, uh, and we added lots more administration and ops for larger teams of data scientists. In June, we added more auto ML features so you can do auto tuning for hyperparameters. We added Apache Arrow support, as well as our graph data science integration to Neo4j Bloom, which was announced at Graph Connect this year. And then in October, we launched 2.2, which had things like multi-layer perceptrons, graph for sampling and graph topology export. And I'm gonna dive deeper, a little, uh, dive in a little bit deeper into all of these areas of what we've been up to. But if you wanna know more, head over to neofj.com forward slash release notes, and you can check out what we've been up to release by release. So in terms of graph data science in Python, we launched our native Python client. And this allows you to interact with Neo4j gra graph data science, just like it was any other Python library. So you can take data frames from Pandas, you can integrate with SkyKit-Learn, PyTorch and TensorFlow, and it's easier than ever to get started. And it's pre-configured to support ORDS. Our doc link is at the bottom if you wanna find out more. In terms of ORDS Professional, we've made it super easy for you to have graph data science, but as a service. 
And so we take care of all of that administration hassle for you. We give you sizing guidance. So all you need to do is tell us the number of nodes, the number of relationships, and what algorithm categories you'd like to run. And we'll provide you with the right size instance for your job. You can scale up and scale down on demand as well as get access to metrics. And you can migrate and clone those instances if you want to do different types of analyses. It's enterprise ready and it's fully managed. So we take care of all the infrastructure, all the updates and security patches so you can just focus on doing data science. And of course, and I think this is the coolest thing that we did launch this year, or one of at least, uh, Graph Data Science inside of Bloom. So now you can now run some of our algorithms on the perspectives in scene. So this scene is uh, the London Tube Network. We're gonna run between us on it and it's gonna compute that for what's in the scene now and we can apply rule-based styling. And so it will change the size of the nodes and the color of the nodes based on the score that Between Us gave us back. If you wanna find out more, head over to the Bloom docs and it will tell you what's available and how you can do some of these bits. In terms of connectors and drivers, I mentioned our native Python client driver, but now we've also added the data warehouse connector. So you can get data to and from Neo4j from things like Snowflake, BigQuery, Redshift or Synapse as well as our Apache Arrow integration, which is available with Graph Data Science Enterprise Edition. So you can move lots of data and really high dimensionality node embeddings really, really fast over the network using Apache Arrow. We also added some uh, community detection algorithms like Leiden and K-Means. So Leiden's like Louvain, but way better because it's less likely to create disconnected communities. So you get this hierarchical modularity-based community detection. And lots of folks were asking for k-means clustering directly inside of Neo4j. So we added it so it allows you to then cluster data based on properties like graph embeddings. And you can also specify the number of communities that you'd also like to expect as well. In terms of our green graph machine learning, we added property regression. So now you can predict what's the value for this missing property. And we also discover what's the best model for you. You just simply supply the data and we'll take care of it for you. In terms of model candidates, we added multiple new options as well. So we had logistic regression for node classification and link prediction. And in 2.1, we made random forest even faster. For node property regression, we added linear regression. And for node classification and link prediction, we also added multi-layer perceptrons too. So you can now create more model candidates with those. In terms of auto-tuning, you can now use a combination of manual and fixed as well as auto-tuning. And so here you can specify the ranges in the model candidates configuration that you'd like to do, as well as specify the trials in terms of the new auto tuning steps that you'd like to add. Definitely go over to the docs, check it out and have a play around because it's super cool and easy to basically start generating uh, bigger models and different models using auto tuning. And one of the great things about 2.2 was our graph sampling. So it's a way to sample a representative sub, sub, sub graph from a graph. So now you can scale more sophisticated machine learning to big graphs by training it on smaller subgraphs. And this isn't a trivial thing. So this is the reason why we brought it into the product. So you can now use the graph sampling to scale native embeddings and machine learning pipelines, whether you're using GraphSage or link prediction pipelines, and you can prepare subgraphs for export, which I'll talk about in the next slide. So you can integrate with your machine learning libraries or graph neural network libraries. And graph topology export is super simple using a relationship stream function. And what it does is it returns to you a nested list of source and target node IDs. And you can use this to basically generate and create graph neural networks, either in PyTorch, TensorFlow, or DGL by exporting those smaller subgraphs. And last but not least, my favorite thing of all is uh, Neo4j. Uh, or a DS enterprise. Oh, I think my slides are just slightly messed up. I apologize. You get all of the features of GDS with none of the administration hassle. So we give you access to 24 by 7 support, as well as larger instances. You get a dedicated environment as well as enterprise security. So things like VPC isolation, uh, VPC private service connect and VPC private service link. So I want to talk a little bit about what's coming next in the future as well. And so I'm going to look out into 2022, uh, 2023. So Happy New Year, we've hit it and we're in now releasing 2.3. And as part of 2.3, we'll be looking at adding hash GNN. So a way for you to create heterogeneous graph embeddings uh, using hash GNN. We'll also be enhancing our Neo4j fabric support so you can do shard local or shard global. And you can bring these together and uh, compute your algorithms across all of your estate of clusters.
In terms of algorithms and machine learning, we're going to be promoting some of those through our product tiers, as well as adding new algorithms, things like minimum, uh, minimum directed Steiner trees. And for you folks, we're adding more notebooks and education so that you can get started quicker and have a look and understand how you can apply this to your use cases. In terms of ORDS availability, we're available now with ORDS Professional and GCP. And if you want to have a look, head over to neofj.com forward slash ORDS. Or if you're interested in ORDS Enterprise, reach out to us at cloudsales at neofj.com. We're looking at adding AWS support and we'll have an enterprise EAP in Q1 of 2023. And shortly afterwards, we'll be adding Microsoft Azure with an EAP for ORDS Enterprise in the first half of the year, as well as adding support for the professional tier as well later on. So if you're really excited and want to get started, here's a few resources for you to get started with. If you want to read more, we've got tons of use cases over at neofj.com. So you can either look at our use cases, how our customers are using graph data science and what they're up to, or if you want a bit more insights into the products, you can also look at the product briefs for ORDS as well. If you want to know what you can do with graph data science, we've got a host of examples available as well, from fraud detection, recommendations, logistics and supply chain, and we'll be adding a brand new customer 361, which shows you how you can do entity recognition with it as well. Uh, so head over to some of these shortcut links, or you can find it on the fj.com if you want to, and we have a whole GitHub full of product, um, product examples. So you want to get your hands dirty. Well, if you want to get your hands dirty, the easiest way is to get started for free with neo4j.com forward slash sandbox. And we give you a guided tour so that you can basically get started with graph data science on a nice data set. And if you want, you can apply your own data set as well. And if you're looking for larger instances and enterprise features, you can head over to neo4j.com forward slash ORDS and you can sign up and get started straight away. And of course, there's the documentation to guide you through how do you create graph projections, run your algorithms, and we've got tons of examples as well in the docs, as well as our GitHub. So I'm going to leave you with a, a lovely link of what we have in terms of where you can get the downloads. Head over to neofj.com forward slash download center. If you want to look at what's in all of our releases, we've got our release notes up online as well. Documentation link. You can also find your DS documentation around in the docs. And if you want to give us some feedback, maybe some new algorithms that you want to see us adding, or if you found some bugs, et cetera, head over to GitHub and submit your issues as well. Uh, I just want to say thank you for listening to this quick lightning talk. Uh, and if you want to contact us, feel free to at sales at neofj.com. Thanks very much. I'm going to hand back over to Alex. Super good. Thank you very much, Luke. I hope I can see some applause emojis in chat uh, for for Luke. Uh, that was that was great. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the slides. <clears throat> so first question here: uh, Can you share the books with 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 us? I think the, the slides will be shared with everybody else as well. Uh, and there you find the links uh, to everything um, that Luke just shared. All the resources um, will be available through there. So. Um, be patient a little bit um, so we can share the slides uh, with you all. Um, we have time for one or two questions. So maybe um, I ask, I'll start with one and then maybe the audience has a couple as well. Uh, you mentioned it before, uh, just when you finished up new algorithms, uh, what, what, is, what is coming up? Can you, can you share uh, a few, a little glimpse to the future? What's, what's next? Uh, I can share a little glimpse yeah. to the future. Um, <laughs> Hash DNNs, the teams are currently working, the teams are working on that at the moment. Uh, we're also looking at adding uh, minimum directed Steiner trees, as, and uh, we're also going to be promoting some of the algorithms up to, into the product here, such as minimum weight spanning trees. So I'll leave that there for the moment, but uh, as we look to the new year and as we get into it, I'm sure we'll be launching more blog posts, et cetera, to the community um, so they can find out more. Cool. Um, do uh, maybe do one more uh, about um, availability of of graph data science. Where where can you where can you use it? I mean, you you showed Sandbox is 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 the free way to to get going and to give a first you know hands dirty impression. But if you are ready to to deploy or to work it uh, as a as as a proper uh, you know uh, you know as a 
you know, proper, <laughs> properly use it in exactly. deployment. In production, yeah. exactly. Thank you. Then uh, wh what's, what's, uh, what's the option? Uh, so if you want to do self-managed, we have uh, available marketplace images across all of the big free clouds, so Amazon, GCP, and Azure. However, if you don't want to do the self-managed and you're looking more for something that is a fully managed service, we have AuraDS a Professional and AuraDS Enterprise. If you're kind of looking at experimenting locally, uh, obviously there's desktop and there's Docker if you fancy that, um, which is great for just getting started. Um, and of course, if you want something free and you just want to play around, head over to Sandbox because that's the best thing to get started. It's a full guided tour, shows you how to get started with graph data science. Yeah, cool. Um, well, while, while speaking about this, do, do, is, are there big differences between the community and the enterprise uh, branch? There are, yeah. So between uh, the community version of GDS and the enterprise version of GDS. Enterprise offers unlimited parallelism as well as unlimited model, uh, basically persistence as well. Uh, we also have some other features like uh, the enterprise compression. So you can use less uh, memory um, while you're running your algorithms and your computation. Um, and there's some other bits like arrow support is an enterprise only feature. If you want to find out what is uh, the differences between the community and enterprise features, uh, head over to the docs. I think this is one of the first chapters or the first chapter which highlights some of these differences between the community and enterprise edition. Cool. Uh, sounds good. Uh, all right. Well, then with that, um, I'll let you go. Thank you very much uh, for, uh, for presenting. Uh, Luke and yeah, uh, I think you'll stick around probably some more so uh, people can talk to you um, and uh, yeah. I will do. Thank you all. Thanks for having me. Speak soon. Thank you, Luke.